Tower 10. Tower 10, what's the story? A great story of collaboration and transformation. The story of Tower 10 starts a long time ago because 20 years ago we came and, uh, and did a big operation to turn the World Trade Center into a friendly urban place uh, with connections to the city and a plaza and a few more towers. And then about eight years ago we were asked to look at um, taking one of the existing towers from the 1970s and um, work with it, incorporate it into a new project and extend it and, and the extension is important because it's a location that needs more square meters of office space. It's quite a complex uh, matter because uh, in the existing building you have to uh, find new uh, square meters and also uh, in some way renew the architecture of the existing and adding a new layer of importance. 30 years ago I started here at the World Trade Center in then Tower C and was a secretary for an advertising agency. And I was so shocked to see what had happened to Sautas when I came back 30 years later. The brief was to look at what could we do with eastern and the northern part of that corner site that included an existing building that was from the 19th, 1980s, the very first building. And then that's what we started with the story from. To describe the vision for Tower 10, we go back to the idea of what it's supposed to be doing for people, how to make people better, and then create an environment for them to thrive in. And so the floor plate and the spaces, the arrangement needed to reflect those changes and needed to reflect the adaptability and flexibility for the future use of the building. For us, the easiest way would have been to go and demolish the existing building and then bring a new, a new floor plate in. But actually, we were, we were really looking closely at what can we do with the existing, how can we actually expand and extend the existing structures without sort of forgetting about what was there before, but building up on it, changing it where it's needed, leaving it where it's favorable and, and it makes sense, and then build up from there. So that, to me, was the story and vision for Tower 10. Well, Tower 10, I think, is maybe one of the most beautiful buildings you can literally work in. Because as receptionist, um, I'm used to uh, international atmosphere and a lot of hustle and bustle. And that's what you find here. But not only that, it's beautiful. It's everything has, has been thought of. There was another real cool aspect of our work um, on Tower 10, which is that there's a building inside it. The old building is still in there, um, which is uh, something that was kind of unusual when we started working on the project. And I must say, looking back at it from 2023, 2024, um, it's exactly what we're doing in many places in Europe at the moment. Um, it would be a waste of good existing um, space and uh, construction in Europe because of the embodied carbon that um, existing structures have in them. We said, okay, well, let's be very precise and slice elements that we don't need or don't work that well. And let's keep what is really, really uh, valuable and uh, that we can build up on and out and upwards. So in the end, um, we took an existing building of about 20,000 square meters and we added an additional 32,000 square meters to the project. So it's more than doubling its um, usable area. And that pays for the quite expensive task of working with existing buildings and working with, within existing foundations, reinforcing pieces underneath a car park in the water. It's a it's time consuming and difficult thing to do, but it's entirely worth doing because then you are, then you're ready for the future. There is a tower element to Tower 10. It's not very tall, but there is also the idea of nestling into the existing lower massing of the project. And in the early 1990s, we created a large curved roof that went from the plaza to the west of this part of the complex all the way to the east. And it created atrium spaces and it created almost um, a connector between the scale of the public realm and the scale of the towers beyond. And we took that roof and extended it towards the east, kind of whipped it up a bit so we could place more smaller pavilions underneath it. So they have proportions that are more like pavilions than, than like office towers. They have atriums, they allow views in and out and daylight in and out, and they allow an expression of the workspace towards the city. Whereas 
the tower is an element that is partly um, curtailed by the orthogonal structure of the existing complex. That's where it starts. But as it rises up, it gains some freedom to move almost like reeds or grass in the wind. It creates a bit of flexible kind of um, expression almost. So the project, which was a singular a uh, glass tower is now a collection of smaller elements, which is a tower that's quite a strong identity by itself, but other parts um, blended into the rest of the complex. Office buildings have the problem that from the inside, you want a lot of glass. You want great views, you're up on level 20, you can see the city, you want lots of daylight to come into the building. But from the outside, that often means that buildings become quite dark um, because glass buildings look very dark. So we had these problems to resolve and the way we did that is by adding a whole web of uh, thin white lines on the building, which we ended up calling baguettes because it made everybody smile. But they are shading elements they protect the office space from the morning sun, from the solar gain that heats up the space and needs cooling in, in summer uh, conditions. It's almost a veil to the building, so uh, the building won't look so dark. The white of the baguettes very much catches the light. And interestingly, it does that on a bright summer's day, but actually much better on a, on a gray day, weirdly. It really holds on to the light and it becomes a bright, sparkling object. And I remember talking to the, the city planners and the Amsterdam Beauty Committee at the time, and they said, well, we hope you're going to be right and it's going to be a sparkly building. And I think I need to, I need to go back and ask them because I think that was very successful and it feels like the building really has a presence to the street. What I like most about the building, I don't know what they call it, but all the beautiful. I think that the tower is absolutely beautiful. And I think it's, it's done really well. And I, to be honest, when, you, when you're in a the park, there's a Beatrix Park nearby or from a bit further in the street, it's sort of, it's like a new beacon within the, this part of the Zuidas. So I think it's quite a successful interpretation. It's almost difficult to just describe Tower 10 as a project. It's not just a sparkly object that rises up on the eastern end, but it is the way it reconnects to the existing complex that makes it very special and, and unique and brings that human scale and the human aspect of, of the workplace, which we're really, really passionate about. And we think that that's so important. And it is in the DNA of the World Trade Center campus, bringing people together. And it has been doing that for many years and it hopefully will be doing it for many years to come. Tower 10 is a place for people to come together and what we come to the office for is to talk to each other and to collaborate and to have discussions, to be creative, to um, have imagination, all the things that machines can't do, so uh, for now anyway. So you'll find that people are getting used to an environment where they can choose the kind of space that works best for them. And that's new in office space. People have no longer a desk space that they use for everything they need to do. Um, badly, usually, because the desk space is really only there for one thing, not for the 12 things that they do every day. This is a state-of-the-art office building. It has uh, all the bits of technology we've talked about in the last 10 years. It is also one of the most energy efficient buildings in the Netherlands. It is very well insulated. We use as much daylight as we can and we balance winter heating and summer cooling by storing energy in the groundwater. What I find it really amazing is that I had to spend time explaining what's actually inside the building because nobody can see the existing building that we actually kept and then it's in, encapsulated within the uh, tower 10. People don't know whether they're in the existing part of the new part of a building and um, and some people saying this is what puzzles me it's like, oh, there's an existing building I don't even remember what it looked like and we just integrated it's just there and that's what's beautiful, that's not what's apparent about it. When we started working on this project, um, we were asked to provide more square meters because there was such a need for it. We were asked to um, 
to respond to the fact that um, the World Trade Center needed more aspect towards the east and towards the Beatrix Park. But in the end, there is so much more to it. And if you work with great teams of people, you have a client who, who allows discussion about the future and you have an eye on what's happening in the world um, con continuously, um, then in the end, when a, when a building is finished, it should do a lot more than it set out to do initially. It's more than an office building, and it's, it's an extension of public space, and it's quite powerful. I think everybody here knows that I'm here to stay because I love this building. I think just before I go with my pension, I finally working at the most beautiful building in Amsterdam. That would then truly embodies the spirit of growth, of organic development that happens on the campus and within the city itself. It really shows how things can adapt and change as, as needed with the time. And I think that that's built into the DNA of what it's about. Creating sort of shells and a platform for people to occupy, to use, that, that's the most important element, bringing people together and then creating an inspiring place.